Yes, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. So I'm Denis Colombier. I'm currently a consultant for the country support platform, and I've been involved over the past months to the global surveillance, NCP template, NCP reviews, and then PAMI selection in DR Congo and several other aspects. So today, my presentation is about the priority areas for multi-sectoral intervention, the PAMIs, and you know that the PAMIs is the new ter technology, uh, sorry, new terminology that replaces the hotspots. We are talking about PAMIs nowadays. Uh, and as we will spend the day on PAMIs, let me try to move my slides. Sorry. Yeah. So my presentation will set the scene for the day because we will spend the day on, the, on PAMIs. And basically, I will cover three aspects. Why is the identification of the PAMI a cornerstone for achieving cholera control and elimination? Then where does it fit into the cholera control and elimination process? The selection or the identification of the PAMIs and how are the outcomes used in practice to guide the cholera control and elimination. So I will start with the, uh, the reason why the identification of priority areas is a cornerstone for achieving cholera control and elimination. And the map that you see on the right is a fictitious country that I will use to illustrate a few of those, uh, of those concepts. So let's start. And we start by getting back to the roots, and the roots is the global roadmap uh, for the 2030, with the targets of eliminating cholera in 20 countries and reducing the cholera deaths uh, by 90% by uh, the year 2030. And the strategy for achieving the global roadmap relies on uh, the concept of national cholera plans that the country develop and then implement, and specially, specially targeted intervention and multi-sectoral intervention. So those are the basic principle of the, 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 the strategy for cholera control by 2030, control and elimination. So let's look a bit in the, in the detail, what we call specially targeted NCPs. The idea here is to focus the control and elimination programs and activities to specific and relatively small areas where the cholera burden is most concentrated. And the idea here is to really maximize the public health impact and the cost effectiveness of the interventions. So those areas are called, they used to be called the cholera hotspots. And nowadays we call them the PAMIs, the priority area for multi-sectoral interventions. And when we talk about multi-sectoral intervention, it means that uh, we rely on the pillar, the six pillars, of the GTFCC global roadmap, and you are all very familiar with those pillars, I'm sure. The water sanitation and hygiene, surveillance and reporting, the use of OCVs, healthcare system strengthening, leadership and coordination, and at the center, the community engagement. So basically, the activities in the families will uh, be operated by the five pillars in collaboration and very much uh, intersectoral coordination with all the, all the intervenants in the families. So where does the identification of family fits into the control and elimination process? It fits from the very beginning in the conception of the national uh, cholera plans, the NCPs. And you see on the right, the, the, the picture of the guideline, which is defining the, uh, how the country can develop their national cholera plan. 
And in that slide, I want to insist on the four blocks that you see on the screen, the inception phase or block, if you wish, the development, the implementation, and the monitoring and reporting. Now, something which is important is that those blocks are sequential. You start the inception, and when the inception is done, then you move to development of the plan. And when the plan has been developed, you can look at implementation and so on and so forth. So basically, you shouldn't start developing the plan unless you have clearly achieved the inception phase. Now, within each of the block, as we will see in the subsequent slides, then we can have parallel activities. And uh, this is true from within the blocks, but not uh, across the various blocks. So let's start with the inception phase as defined in the NCP guidance. And the first uh, step here in that block is to declare the country commitment. And uh, the country commitment should actually be done at the highest level in the country and should really stress again the multi-sectoral approach, multi-annual uh, duration of the plan, and uh, a strong monitoring and evaluation component. Now, that second step is the identification and prioritization of the PAMIs. And this is really the cornerstone of the whole, of the whole plan. We will spend a lot of time, so I will not develop the methodology to, to identify and prioritize, but basically, as we want to maximize the impact on the burden of cholera, then the PAMIs rely uh, for their identification on the epidemiological indicators and the vulnerability indicators. But we will spend a lot of time on that today. Then we conduct a situation analysis, basically mapping of stakeholders, initiatives, look at the pillar capacity, the gap assessment, external factors influencing possibly the, the plan, and uh, concluding with the set of uh, the 16 core baseline indicator of the GTFCC. Uh, then we define the leadership and coordination mechanisms, and what the, 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 the guidance advocates is for uh, uh, establishing a task force that will look into the, the implementation and the, the preparation and the implementation of the plan and put an organizational chart based on functions to really understand who does what in that multi-sectoral uh, activity. And then the country has to formulate the goal, basically at the end of that inception phase, whether the country engage in elimination of cholera or in control of cholera with time frame and milestones. Let's move to the second block, the development block. So in uh, that block for each of the five pillars, the, 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 the task is to formulate and prioritize activities. And this is done through a logical framework analysis. Then develop the operational plan and associated budgets for those priority activities. And basically here you want to see who will be responsible for what, with whom, again, the multi-sectoral, using which resources and in which time frame. And then at this stage already, we develop a monitoring and evaluation framework, including the definition of indicator and milestones. And uh, I just put uh, at the bottom of the screen, a, a picture extracted from the NCP guidance that uh, gives a bit of indication on the type of input, output, outcome, impact indicators that are expected to appear in the, in the plan. Following the development, you have the implementation phase. So all the activities that have been identified by the five pillars should establish timeline, uh, budget, indicators, verification, risk, assess risk assumption, and so on. So it's really, this is really the planning phase for the, for the activities over, over the years. And this leads to the monitoring and reporting uh, block. 
uh, which outlines what is expected over the implementation of the plan in terms of monitoring of activities, like quarterly monitoring of indicator across each pillar, and then uh, as reporting, expected to provide an annual report of progress with targets and indicators, or impact indicators, index review, and any other reports or lessons learned that emerge during the year should be should be part of that. And uh, last but very important is to review the prioritized activities for the next period on the basis of what was learned in the current period. So the plan should be reviewed annually. Actually, the PAMIS could be revisited as well, should the priority change. And important as well is to check the external factor that may influence the ability to implement the plan and see if there are any changes that may have impacted, may could impact actually in the in the coming years the, the plan and could require some adjustment. So let's look how those outcomes in practice uh, will help to guide cholera control and elimination. So here, just come back a bit on the prioritization steps for the for the PAMIS, but again, we will spend uh, several presentations on that today. So basically, we start with the geographical units in the country. And those units, we kind of call them nowadays the operational geographical units. That's basically the smallest unit where surveillance and activities are coordinated for controlling and responding to, to cholera. So you will see the terminology emerging now, the operational geographic units, OGUs. And then in those GUs, you first focus on those having experienced cholera. And then uh, we will prioritize them, as I said, on the epidemic epidemiologic indicators and vulnerability to have the basis on which the pillars can prioritize the activity and develop the implementation plan. So again, the identification of the PAMIS is one step before the priority in the in the pillar. It's in a different block and it shouldn't be done at the at the same time, but it should be done uh, sequentially. Now what the PAMIS uh, may not be is that uh, they, it may be that not all PAMIs will be a priority for all pillars. So uh, it's important to keep in mind it's not because we have a PAMI that each pillar should have a specific strengthening or control activity. It may be that some PAMI doesn't require that for some of the pillars. And they will not receive all, as a consequence, necessarily the same package of intervention. So there is a bit of flexibility here left to the pillars to develop what kind of activities, uh, multi-sectoral activities should be prioritized in each of the families. Now, we'll use that fictitious country to go a bit to an example of the selection of the PAMIs and the priority IS for pillar intervention. Now, what you see at the bottom of my slide is the two blocks, inception block that covers the first two maps and the development block that covers the, the third map. So in that fictitious country, we have 173 zones or operational geographic units, as I indicated, which are the areas where the activities are, are primarily conducted. So out of those 173 in that fictitious country, we have 104 OGUs that have experienced cholera cases in the past five years. So of course, the priority will be set within those 104 OGUs that have experienced cholera cases. Now through the process, that's the second map, through the process then we will refine which of the OGUs having experienced cases have the highest burden and therefore should be considered as a burden and vulnerabilities and should be considered as a PAMI. 
And in that example again, then we go from 104 OGUs to 18 priority areas for multi-sectoral sectoral interventions. And then the third uh, map, which is subsequently coming during the inception phase, each of the pillars will review the priorities, activities within those 18 PAMIs. And it may be, as we said, that not all the PAMIs will be selected for specific activities by specific pillars. And it does, in that example, we just highlighted 17 PAMIs will be selected for healthcare strengthening activities. So basically, just to show you how those steps are uh, reaching the point where we focus the activities on the areas with the where the, the those activities will have the maximum impact. Uh, <clears throat> now here you have uh, an example of the tools that are supporting uh, those uh, selection. So from the OGU to the PAMIs, it's the PAMI tool basically that will be presented in length today. So I'm not elaborating it. And what you see on the right is one example of the OCV priority tool. When you look at the PAMIs for certain vulnerability and other criteria, then the pillar can select the activities and which of the PAMI they want to conduct activity. And to facilitate that, they, they, there is a data exchange format between the tools. And uh, in the future coming soon, then the pillar will have tools to, to develop those. And then in conclusion, I would like to stress the key messages. The PAMI identification is really at the heart of the, sorry, is really at the heart of the global roadmap for cholera control and elimination. The objective is to maximize the public health impact and cost effectiveness of intervention. It's a critical step in the development of the national cholera plan at the inception phase. And uh, it is the basis for the pillar to prioritize activities and develop implementation plan in the other phases. And it's a dynamic process that should be updated on a regular basis. Thank you very much.